Today, I will be rating every LEGO Star Wars Mandalorian set ever made. From 2019 all the way up to 2022. Where's the first edition? Now before this starts, subscribe. Please, I'm almost at 100. I need this. Let's go. So, here's the first set that I put on the list. So the, that would be saying, this is my least favorite Mandalorian Lego set ever made. And this Lego set is called The Child, set number 75318, ages 10 plus. Now you're probably wondering why I hate this Lego set. It's not that bad compared to a whole bunch of other Lego sets though. But out of every Mandalorian set made, this has to be my least favorite. Just because of the look of it. Now, I'm not just judging it by the looks. I'm judging it by the whole overall set. First off, the price is kind of overwhelming. $100 for this. I don't really see the worth in spending $100 on this. And I feel like it's very exposed is the word I use. Because there's just open studs everywhere. And, you know, it's very painful to pick stuff up with just open studs like that. And it only does come with one minifigure, although it was a very great idea to make this as a set. I feel like there's some things Lego could have done better, added more play features or something. I don't know, just made it a little better at least. Next up, we have the Razor Crest Micro Fighter, set number 75321 and AG6+. Now you're probably wondering, why am I hating on this set? Well, you shouldn't be wondering that because this set is genuinely horrible, I feel like. And I'm not, like, criticizing you for liking the set, but... I just don't see the worth or value in the set at all. Even the, and the retail price is $20, which is excessive for a microfighter. And it's substantially like a microfighter this bad. Like, it's horrible. I And, you know, if you want to see a better one, I actually built a custom one myself. And I made a whole video short about it. So go check it out. I'll link the video in the description. So, yeah. But this set... As I said, don't see the worth in it. And it, the minifigure, I mean, it's just the Mandalorian. But they did add in the new stud shooters in this, which is cool. But overall, the set is kind of horrible. So I wouldn't really recommend buying this set out of all of these sets, really. Now we have the Mandalorian Battle Pack. Set number 75267, AG6+. You may be wondering, why am I adding this in here if it's not even in the Mandalorian or anything like that? Well, I'm only adding it in here because they made an appearance in the Mandalorian Season 3 trailer. Hopefully make an appearance in the actual season. It'd be pretty cool. So that's the only reason I added it in. And you may be wondering, why did I add this so low? Overall, I feel like this has a cool concept. Not cool set, just cool concept. I feel like it is also a bit, was a bit overpriced when it was released and still is now. But, you know, there's Lego for you. But still, for a battle pack like this and releasing it out of nowhere, just Mandalorian... I mean, it's weird just to randomly release a battle pack with four random minifigures and then just retail it for an over-expensive price. But as I said, cool concept. The minifigures are kind of cool, and some of them are all over the place, like that one green Mandalorian. Kind of like a wannabe Boba Fett. The build's kind of random. Not really good. It And the set is only really good if you buy it once, because it's not good for any army building methods at all. So that's kind of the problem with it. That's what a battle pack is supposed to be, and this isn't. There's, like, no good alternate builds for it either. So, that's why it's down here so low. Next up, we have the Trouble on Tatooine set. Set number 75299. Set ages 7+. plus. So, I have some issues with this set. Overall, the minifigures are pretty good. And the hut and the... Well, overall, the whole build is great. Except some problems I do have with it. It was overpriced, just like any Lego set, really. But it went it went um, out of sale very quickly, which was kind of confusing to me. But I really do like how it came with a speeder bike. But the reason I put this in so low is kind of the lack of builds, I guess. And it could have been more polished and looked more polished and like cleaned up and better. Or it looked more like Tatooine. But that crossbow is my major problem. I absolutely hate it. I hate the look of it and everything. Lego could have made it so much better, but they decided to make it look like that instead. Lego should be kind of ashamed of themselves for doing that. And they should just learn from their mistakes and do better next time. Next up, we have the Armors Mandalorian Forge, set number 75319, and ages 8+. Overall, this set is pretty okay. 
I would buy it, and I might do a review on it. So, if I do buy it, I will do a review on it. I would only ever buy it for the figures, though. I like how it comes with Previsula. It's probably, I'm pretty sure, the only set that actually does. But Mandalorian Season 3 might change that. But I would really only buy it for the figures, because I've got a bone to pick with this set. This set could have been so much better. Like, that Mandalorian print above the doorway could have been an actual mold and looked way better. And there's so many things they messed up on, like the overall forge could have looked so much better. But the set is pretty nice overall, I guess. But of course, there's always things they could have changed in it. They could have made it a little bit bigger for being 30 flippin' dollars. Which, yeah, that's kind of stupid for this. But as I said, the minifigures are great, so that would be the only reason I'd buy it. Really. Next up, we have Boba Fett Starship. Set number 75312 and ages 9 plus. Overall, the set is pretty good. And some of you might be wondering, why am I adding it into the Mandalorian one? Well, first of all, it's got the Mandalorian logo on the box. It comes with the Mandalorian, and it was in the Mandalorian. It's what they based the set out of from the Mandalorian appearance. So there's why. Overall, the set is really pretty good, but... I feel like the size decreases why the sales for the set didn't do very well, and I would have liked it to be a little bigger and changed quite a few of the mold and stuff on it, like the stud shooters. They were starting to use the newer stud shooters sets before this, and they thought they didn't even think about it. They just put in the old stud shooters, which kind of takes me off. Would have been better with no stud shooters. And the overall cannons are kind of flimsy on the bottom, but they look good. And the set is really quite nice. Although it does only come with too many figures, it would have been nice to see like Fennec Shand or at least Baby Yoda come in the set. Would have been way better. Next up we have the Dark Trooper Helmet. Set number 75343 and it is 18 plus. And this set is okay. And yeah, this isn't like a regular set. This is the Ultimate Collector Series Helmet. This is $80. So I think that's a little bit overpriced. And I feel like this looks... Sort of inaccurate. I don't know why. Just. Like it has been screwing up with the Dark Troopers. While the figures and this helmet are both great. Just I feel like they both look totally different from each other. Like if you put this helmet next to an actual Dark Trooper minifig. The helmets look different. Like way different. And I've been thinking about this with every helmet. It should come with the minifigure. Like for this one it's going to come with a Dark Trooper. Darth Vader's helmet come with a Darth Vader minifigure. And stuff like that. I feel like that really increased the sales a little bit at least, but this set could have used some improvement for sure. Then we have the ATST Raider, set number 75254 and ages 8 plus. I'm not really hating on this set, there's a lot to love about it, except there's some kind of weird details. I'm so glad they brought this kind back, because um, a while back during the Rogue One phase, they had an ATST that looked just like it. But it was like all gray and stuff. But I like the ATSTs look like this. And I hate the new ATST look that they brought for like the Hoth ATST. This one is definitely way better. The minifigs are great as well. Just those other, those like bad guys are kind of random, I guess. And then this set was released before the episode with this in it. Like this whole Lego set. It's kind of weird. But this Lego set is really great. It's just really fragile. And kind of breaks way easily but overall this set is actually a really good set that i would recommend buying then we have dark trooper attack set number 75324 and ages 8 plus i don't really have that many problems with this set other youtubers and a lot of other people i know completely are just hating on this set but i don't really know why i have a little bit of problem with it i mean the loot could mold i like the new mold just it just yeah, it doesn't look very good with Luke, but I hate that huge gap in the side wall. It bugs me so much, but, you know, they, <clears throat> they've raised the price of this from 30 to $35, which isn't a major price change, and I'm saying that because it's probably the, the easiest way to get Dark Troopers. I mean, it would be cool if they made a Dark Trooper battle pack, but this is the only reason I kind of recommend buying it and to get cheapest way to get the new hood mold as well. Overall, the set does look really great on display, and it's good for, like, playing and stuff. This set is great, just that one hole in the wall is what's really bugging me right now. Then we have the Mandalorian helmet, set number 75328, and ages 18+. plus. I like this set a lot. I mean, 
I like the whole Helmet series in general. I feel like it's a really great series and a great idea that LEGO did it, honestly. Except the prices, I kind of don't like, but overall, I really do like this. There's nothing to say. I like the like the chrome lining going down the middle of the helmet. It looks really great. It really adds some detail to it. And when this was first coming out, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's just going to be the Boba Fett helmet, but great. Don't buy it. Well, actually, I own both, and it was a different building experience for both. And they weren't built the same at all, and they don't really look as similar as you would think they would. But they're both great helmets, and this I do really recommend buying. If you're looking to buy any helmet from the Helmet series, it'd be this one I'd recommend to you. Then speaking of Boba Fett's helmet, we have Boba Fett's helmet, set number 75277, and age is 18+. plus. This helmet... Is by far probably my favorite helmet ever made and was also my first. And as I said, it's nothing like the Mandalorians. But they do look really good next to each other. This helmet is great overall. I really like how the antenna slash visor thing can move up and down. It looks great. And it just looks great next to any set, really. And as I said, with the dark trooper helmet, they should add minifigures with it make it look better. But <clears throat> this helmet really has the most detail out of every helmet. It's like the helmet is full on detailed to like the max. It's really cool. Then we have the Imperial Armored Marauder set number 75311 and ages 8 plus. This set is really, really great. A lot of people kind of hate on it and I really don't understand why. Um, <clears throat> people hate on it because... Of how bulky it is and like the set overall, but I don't really see a problem. I mean, I wish the set could open up more and it was like an easier access point to get to the interior of the Marauder because it's kind of hard to get inside. But I still don't understand why you would hate on this set. The set is really cool, and I've been waiting for the set for a long time ever since it made an appearance in Star Wars Rebels. I'm like, man, I hope they make this as a set. When they did, I was so happy. The minifigures in this are great. Grief, wait, yeah, Grief Karga. He's a great minifigure. And <clears throat> then we have this two stormtroopers. And then by far my favorite trooper, what everyone is calling the muster trooper. But this set calls it the artillery trooper. But I love this stormtrooper. I wish we could see more of him in more sets. It's the only reason I'd buy like three more of these. Just to get more uh, muster troopers, honestly. Next up, we have the Mandalorians and one Starfighter, set number 75325, and age is 9+. Plus. Yes, I know this is from the Book of Boba Fett, but it's in the name, the Mandalorians. Also, it has the Mandalorian as a minifigure, so I'm throwing this in here, because and it's literally his new ship, too. Overall, I think this is a great set. Of course, the Razor Crest will always be better and more iconic than this, but I'm glad they decided to bring back an N1 Starfighter. They're one of my favorite ships. So some problems I have with this is I wish the cockpit could like slide open like it does in the show, but I'm kind of glad they did it like this because sliding open cockpits are one of the most annoying things when it comes to Lego. And I wish they would have added more tiles and made it look a little more polished and cleaned up a little bit. I really wish they would have done that. But other than that, I really like it. The minifigs are great. I think it's weird that they put BD-1 in the set, but I mean, hey, I'm not complaining. It's great. Then we have the Imperial Light Cruiser, set number 75315 and ages 10 plus. I have nothing really against this set. I really love this set, like, a lot. This set is genuinely one of my favorites, except I have some off in front of this, but one problem I have is the lack of interior space. Of course, you can open up the big flap in the middle and... Get some nice room in there. Some no mini. You can't close it with minifigure standing up, and sometimes not even with them sitting down. Which is a problem I have, and it's not as big as you would like. The set is pretty big, but like the interior space, <laughs> they should fix that for next time. And this was the first set that included a dark trooper minifig, which is pretty cool, honestly. And those giant flick fire missile thingies, man, those are bugging me. It they are cool, and I think they would have been better without the flick fire missiles, honestly. At least this set doesn't have stud shooters. Next up, we have the Mandalorian and the Child Briquette, set number 75317, and age is 10+. Plus. 
You guys might be wondering why I'm putting these so high on the list. And some people aren't wondering that, but some people hate on brickheads. Like, hate on them and put these immediately at the bottom of the list. I don't know what their problem is, but, you know, I, I love brickheads, okay? And these brickheads have to be one of my all-time favorite brickheads ever. I love these ones so much. These ones are great. I mean, some brickheads aren't that great, but these ones are great. The Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, they look really nice next to each other. And it's just really cool. And you can even take Baby Yoda out of his floating crate. I don't know why they numbered this ages 10 plus. I mean, it's a brickhead. They're not that complicated. But this set is really nice. And it might be retiring soon, I think. Or might have already. I don't know. But if you're looking to get any brickheads, I would recommend this brickhead. Then we have the Razor Crest set number 75292 and ages 10 plus. I have nothing against this set. This set is unarguably one of my all-time favorite lego sets that i own this set is really amazing and it's unfortunate to see it retiring this year because this set took forever to come out it was like the almost the end of the second mandalorian season that it came out and it's probably because the mandalorian was so popular and i really do love this set and it sold out quickly probably because it has baby yoda in it and this set is really big and spacious and really cool just one thing I have a problem with is the engines. They could have made them look more circular at the front. That's, like, the only problem I have with it. And, um, the flick fire missiles. I don't know why. I just don't really like flick fire. And then the inside, it comes with carbonite. And I wish they used the mold of carbonite instead of putting blocks together in a sticker. It would have looked so much better, though. Then, my all-time favorite Mandalorian Lego set... The UCS Razor Crest set number 75331, ages 18 plus. This set is enormous. And no, I don't own it. I've watched reviews about it because the set is $650. That is one problem I have with this set and probably the only problem I have with this set, how expensive it is. Like $650. Yeah, I know it's got over 6,000 pieces, but $600 seems excessive for a set like this. I mean, I would really like to get this set, but I probably won't. It's way expensive, but I think it is really cool how it is minifigure scale. I think it's cool how they pulled that off. I wish other sets, like UCS sets, were like that, like maybe the gunship or something. But this is really cool, and it came with that blue fish guy. I forget what his name is. It's the first set that ever came with him, which I think is pretty cool. And I feel like they should release them in a cheaper set so other people could get them. And Quill, too. I think that'd be cool. Honestly, this wouldn't even be on the list if they didn't release it just a few months ago, I think, or a few weeks ago. I don't know. But the original Paul was between... There's Yeah, there's originally a Paul between this set or a UCS Venator. Man, I thought the UCS Venator was going to win for sure. But that would have been cool to see. Maybe we'll get it some other time. But the set... Man, this set is still really, really cool. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and share. And also, please subscribe. I need it. And peace out. Yo